page 12 listen to evelyn james joyce 1882 to 1941 james joyce is a major literary figure of the first quarter of the 20th century he is known for his bold experiments in narrative techniques in fiction and ulysses is his first most famous work Evelyn is one of the 15 stories of Dublin life that formed Dubliners first published in 1914 it is a sympathetic portrayal of Evelyn who has within her reach escaped from the drudgery of her life but cannot gather enough courage to seize it text follows she sat at the window watching the evening invade the avenue her head was leaned against the window curtains and in her nostrils was the odor of dusty creatine she was tired few people passed the man out of the last house passed on his way home she heard his footsteps clacking along the concrete pavement and afterwards crunching on the cinder path before the new red houses one time there used to be a field there in which they used to play every evening with other people's children then a man from belfast bought the field and built houses in it not like their little brown houses but bright brick houses with shining roofs the children of the avenue used to play together in that field the divines the waters the duns little keog the cripple she and her brothers and sisters ernst however never played he was too grown up Her father often used to hunt them in and out of the field with his black thorn stick but usually little keog used to keep nix and call out when he saw her father coming nix is an old slang word originally used by thieves to refer to the member of a gang who kept watch page 13 still they seemed to have been rather happy then her father was not so bad then and besides her mother was alive that was a long time ago she and her brothers and sisters were all grown up her mother was dead tizzy dun was dead too and the waters had gone back to england everything changes now she was going to go away like the others to leave her home home she looked round the room reviewing all its familiar objects which she had dusted once a week for so many years wondering where on earth all the dust came from perhaps she would never see again those familiar objects from which she had never dreamed of being divided and yet during all those years she had never found out the name of the priest whose yellowing photograph hung on the wall above the broken harmonium beside the colored print of the promises made to blessed margaret mary alcock page 14 he had been a school friend of her father whenever he showed the photograph to a visitor Her father used to pass it with a casual word. He is in Melbourne now. She had consented to go away, to leave her home. Was that wise? She tried to weigh each side of the question. In her home, anyway, she had shelter and food. She had those whom she had known all her life about her. Of course, she had to work hard both in the house. and at business what would they say of her in the stores when they found out that she had run away with a fellow say she was a fool perhaps and her place would be filled up by advertisement miss gavin would be glad she had always had an edge on her especially whenever there were people listening Miss Hill don't you see these ladies are waiting look lively miss hill please she would not cry many tears at leaving the stores but in her new home 
in a distant unknown country it would not be like that then she would be married she evelyn people would treat her with respect then she would not be treated as her mother had been even now though she was over 19 she sometimes felt herself in danger of her father's violence she knew it was that that had given her the palpitations when they were growing up he had never gone for her like he used to go for harry and ernest because she was a girl but lately he had begun to threaten her and say what he would do to her only for her dead mother's sake and now she had no pity to protect her ernest was dead and harry who was in the church decorating business was nearly always down somewhere in the country besides the invariable squabble for money on saturday nights had begun to weary her unspeakably she always gave her entire wages 7 shillings and harry always sent up what he could but the trouble was to get any money from her father he said she used to squander the money that she had no head that he wasn't going to give her his hard earned money to throw about the streets and much more for he was usually fairly bad on saturday night in the end he would give her the money and ask her had she any intention of buying sunday's dinner page 15 then she had to rush out as quickly as she could and do her marketing holding her black leather purse tightly in her hand as she elbowed her way through the crowds and returning home late under her load of provisions she had hard work to keep the house together and to see that the two young children who had been left to her charge went to school regularly and got their meals regularly it was hard work a hard life but now that she was about to leave it she did not find it a wholly undesirable life stop and think one why did evelyn review all the familiar objects at home two where was evelyn planning to go text follows she was about to explore another life with frank frank was very kind manly open hearted she was to go away with him by the night boat to be his wife and to live with him in buenos aires where he had a home waiting for her how well she remembered the first time she had seen him he was lodging in a house on the main road where she used to visit it seemed a few weeks ago he was standing at the gate his peaked cap pushed back on his head and his hair tumbled forward over a face of bronze then they had come to know each other he used to meet her outside the stores every evening and see her home he took her to see the bohemian girl and she felt elated as she sat in an unaccustomed part of the theater with him he was awfully fond of music and sang a little people knew that they were quoting and when he sang about the lass that loves a sailor she always felt pleasantly confused he used to call her poppins out of fun first of all it had been an excitement for her to have a fellow and then she had begun to like him he had tales of distant countries he had started as a deck boy at a pound a month on a ship at the alan line going out to canada he told her the names of the ships he had been on and the names of the different services page 16 he had sailed through the streets of magellan and he told her stories of the terrible patagonians he had fallen on his feet in buenos aires he said and had come over to the old country just for a holiday of course her father had found out the affair and had forbidden her to have anything to say to him i know these sailor chaps he said 
One day he had quarrelled with Frank, and after that she had to meet her lover secretly. The evening deepened in the avenue. The white of two letters in her lap grew indistinct. One was to Harry, the other was to her father. Ernest had been her favourite, but she liked Harry too. Her father was becoming old lately. She noticed he would miss her. Sometimes he could be very nice. Not long before, when she had been laid up for a day, he had read her out a ghost story, and made toast for her at the fire. Another day, when their mother was alive, they had all gone for a picnic to the hill of Howth. She remembered her father putting on her mother's bonnet to make the children laugh. Her time was running out. but she continued to sit by the window leaning her head against the window curtain inhaling the odor of dusty cretonne down far in the avenue she could hear a street organ playing she knew the air strange that it should come that very night to remind her of the promise to her mother her promise to keep the home together as long as she could she remembered the last night of her mother's illness she was again in the closed dark room at the other side of the hall and outside she heard a melancholy air of italy the organ player had been ordered to go away and given sixpence she remembered her father strutting back into the sick room saying damned italians coming over here as she mused the pitiful vision of her mother's life laid its spell on the very quick of her being that life of commonplace sacrifices closing in final craziness she trembled as she heard again her mother's voice saying constantly with foolish insistence de revoir sera de revoir sera de revoir sera possibly corrupt gaelic for the end of pleasure is pain page 17 stop and think 1 who was frank why did evelyn's father quarrel with him 2 what significance does evelyn find in the organ player's appearance on the day she had decided to leave text continues she stood up in a sudden impulse of terror escape she must escape frank would save her he would give her life perhaps love too but she wanted to live why should she be unhappy she had a right to happiness frank would take her in his arms fold her in his arms he would save her she stood among the swaying crowd in the station at the north wall he held her hand and she knew that he was speaking to her saying something about the passage over and over again the station was full of soldiers with brown baggages through the white doors of the sheds she caught a glimpse of the black mass of the boat lying in beside the quay wall with illumined portholes she answered nothing she felt her cheek pale and cold and out of a maze of distress she prayed to god to direct her to show her what was her duty the boat blew a long mournful whistle into the mist if she went tomorrow she would be on the sea with frank steaming toward buenos aires their passage had been booked could she still draw back after all he had done for her her distress awoke a nausea in her body and she kept moving her lips in silent fervent prayer a bell clanged upon her heart she felt him seize her hand come all the seas of the world tumbled about her heart he was drawing her into them he would drown her she gripped with both hands at the iron railing come no 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 it was impossible 
Her hands clutched the iron in frenzy. Amid the seas, she sent a cry of anguish. Evelyn! Evie! He rushed beyond the barrier and called to her to follow. He was shouted at to go on, but he still called to her. Page 18 She set her white face to him, passive like a helpless animal. Her eyes gave him no sign of love or farewell or recognition. Understanding the text 1. Name the two characters in this story whom Evelyn liked and loved. And two, she did not. What were the reasons for her feelings towards them? 2. Describe the conflict of emotions felt by Evelyn on the day she had decided to elope with Frank. 3. Why do you think Evelyn let go of the opportunity to escape? 4. What are the signs of Evelyn's indecision? that we see as the hour of her departure with Frank neared. Talking about the text. 1. Deciding between filial duty and the right to personal happiness is problematic. Discuss. 2. Share with your partner any instance of your personal experience where you or somebody you know had to make a difficult choice. Appreciation. 1. The description in this story has symbolic touches. What do you think the window, the gathering dusk, the dusty cretonne and its odour symbolise? 2. Note how the narrative proceeds through the consciousness of Evelyn. 3. In the last section of the story, notice these expressions. 1. A bell clanged upon her heart. 2. All the seas of the world tumbled upon her heart. 3. Her hands clutched the iron in frenzy. 4. She set her white face to him, passive like a helpless animal. What are the emotions that these images evoke? 4. Do you think the author indicates his judgment of Evelyn in the story? Page 19 Language work A. Grammar Parallelism Notice the following sentence. One was to Harry, the other was to her father. When you coordinate two or more elements in a sentence, they are in the same grammatical form, that is, they are parallel. This ensures balance in the sentence. In the sentence above, there is a reference to what was said in the previous sentence. Two letters. The predicative pattern is the same and the two parts are separated by a semicolon. Parallelism is a basic rhetorical principle. Equal form reinforces equal meaning. By placing equally important ideas successively, you emphasize their relationship to one another. It can show either similarity or contrast as in Then a man from Belfast bought the field and built houses in it. Not like their little brown houses but bright brick houses with shining roofs. Sometimes the choice of words establishes the parallel and reinforces equal meaning, as in, Ernest had been her favourite, but she liked Harry too. Task Underline the parts that are parallel in the following sentences. She had consented to go away to leave her home. Strange that it should come that very night to remind her of the promise of her mother, her promise to keep the home together as long as she could. She prayed to God to direct her, to show her 
what was her duty. Frank would take her in his arms, fold her in his arms. Her time was running out, but she continued to sit by the window, leaning her head against the window curtain, inhaling the odour of dusty cretonne. Not long before, when she had been laid up for a day, he had read her out a ghost story and made toast for her at the fire. Page 20 B. Pronunciation A word has as many syllables as it has vowels. Man One syllable Manner Two syllables The mark indicates that the first syllable in manner is more prominent than the other. In a word having more than one syllable, the one that is more prominent than the other syllable is called the stressed syllable. Task Mark the stressed syllables in the following words chosen from the lesson. Consult the dictionary or ask the teacher if necessary. Photograph Threaten Illumined Invariable Escape Excitement Sailor Changes Farewell Sacrifice Suggested Reading Dubliners by James Joyce